Hi, this is Balanced Health. I'm Shirley Rose, and this is Joe Costello, our resident health activist. And if you ask a room full of female baby boomers which disease they fear most, nine out of 10 will likely say breast cancer. Mm. It's potentially disfiguring and historically deadly too. And too many in the 40 to 60 age group have witnessed a mother, an aunt, a cousin, or a close friend to be diagnosed with the disease. Age is the greatest risk factor for breast cancer. 75% of those diagnosed are 50 or older. And the statistics tell us that one in nine American wow. women will develop this disease in her lifetime. It seems critical for boomers to be on top of the latest findings and recommendations. So joining us a little later is Dr. David Bryant. He's a radiation oncologist with Edward Cancer Center and Fox Valley Radiation Oncology. So we'll be talking about some very important things later, but first you have well, something we for the there, news. We're, we're gonna talk about something kind of weird. Today, uh, in Nutrition in the News, uh, our, we, we're talking about something called placentagoptophagy. I'm going to pronounce that again. Placentophagy. Yes, which it. is the practice of ingesting your placenta after giving birth. Yikes. Yeah. It's certainly not standard practice, <laughs> yeah. but some are staunch believers. You know, um, surely one of the things that this points out to is that this scientist by the name of Jody Sealander states that we are the only species of mammal that does not eat our young. Yes, but may I oh, just... Not, that, that does not eat our... You know, that yeah, the, mammals. Mother doesn't, yes. Yeah, well, may I just point out that many mammals also eat feces, and many mammals eat their young, eat their and that young. does not mean and that humans should do it, and I, I have a real hard time with this, I'm sorry. Well, you know, we like to bring about things, though, that, you know, mm -hmm. make people think. Yes, and that's true. And just take a broad spectrum But it really spectrum is in look. the news. I mean, it's, people it's are in really... in the news. I mean, really I've got this whole this. thing here, a study in a, a University of New York, Buffalo, uh, of what went on with this. But I would like to tie it into this because I do think that there's some relevance here. You know, you, we, we hear all this stuff about the umbilical cord and people freezing yes. the umbilical cord and the blood from the umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. And you just keep hearing more and more about it. And I keep uh, reading more and more about this. And I do believe that there's something there. That there's some answers there. Well, can I just ask, what are the benefits supposed to be to a mother who would eat her own placenta? I think they're similar to what they're touting the benefits of the of cord blood are in, in that, uh, you know, She's taking all these nutrients that the baby were on loan to the baby okay. and re-ingesting them back in her body so that she can then redistribute them back to the baby through breastfeeding. Well, doesn't it also say, I was looking at some of your stats here or some of your the news, said that it, it helps with postpartum depression? Yes, and that, that's, well, but the reason for that supposedly is that one of the reasons for postpartum depression, naturalists believe, or nutritional people believe, is the exhaustion that the body has gone in, gone through, that the mm. a mother's body has gone through by loaning all these nutrients oh, to really? the placenta during the time of pregnancy. Hmm. Because, you know, the mother is living for two at that point in time. Yeah, but you don't have this exhaustion during pregnancy. No, you don't, but yeah, the just... baby's the baby's alive and the, and the baby's thriving, and after you okay. go through the traumatic thing of birth, and again, this is just a theory of why there's postpartum depression. I honestly have no idea why there is postpartum depression, but there certainly doesn't seem to be good science behind the fact that re-ingesting the placenta is going to alleviate it. But I do think, and the reason why we wanted to bring it up was uh, to talk about Cord blood. Cord blood, yes. And, and what's going on with that? And I know that in your own life, mm -hmm. uh, you're... Yeah, well, uh, yeah, cord blood. And, and we have to talk about the whole uh, embryonic stem cell research th thing, because, but there's been found so many healing powers in stem blood, and to the point where I, we've mentioned, we mentioned on, on a prior show that my oldest granddaughter has type 1 diabetes, mm -hmm. child onset diabetes, and so now her, uh, my daughter has given birth to an, uh, another child, and um, and she preserved her cord blood, and there are companies that will help you to preserve your cord blood. It's really not that expensive. It's, you know, just two or three thousand dollars. I think they'll preserve it for, for 20 years or something like that. And the reason she did that, she said, I want, and of course, we're going to pray about this and, and, and trust God to help in this, but we really believe that with the research that's being done and the success that's that's happening with, with cord blood uh, stem cell research, that she feels that one day that Macy's diabetes might be cured through this cord blood. Well, Shirley, I mean, that's a prayer of mine, you know, not only for your granddaughter, but for the public at large, because mm -hmm. I think the evidence is really becoming overwhelming that um, stem cell research, even from other adults, has been benefiting tremendously and that we don't need, regardless the of where embryos. somebody lines up on this embryo scenario, right. um, I just think that we're playing God yeah. by creating Frankensteins for our own use. And mm -hmm. I think that the, the, the penalty for that is going to be severe as a society. That, that's my personal belief. I'm not 
That's well, the view of this station, but that's my personal belief. And uh, I think there are, there are answers and things like cord blood mm -hmm. and, and stem cell uh, research from Adults. Cord blood and adults, absolutely. And yes, we, we on TLN are staunchly pro-life, but regardless of where you stand, mm -hmm. there has been no success with embryonic stem cell research, whereas there's been great success with cord blood research and also adult uh, um, uh, stem cell research. So, you know, yeah, let's let's go in the right, right direction, but it's a miracle, it's really a medical miracle, and it's, and it's amazing, really, what they're doing with this cord blood. So, yeah, the placenta's, you know, all tied into this, and I know there's something there, but there's even a company, I read that there's even a company that will capsulize it for you. There is. So that's, they'll, they'll that's pretty, they're serious about want. this. And yeah. I, you know, it, it, it was just a bit of levity. I think in all seriousness, we're probably looking at one tenth of one percent of the population that engages in such a thing. We wanted it to lead to the cord blood thing. We wanted it to lead to the point of embryonic uh, stem cell being a failure scientifically and um, that morally it's a, it's a real. Yes, it is it a problem. Slippery slope. It's a problem. It is. But, uh, but you know, we can we can look for, for great things as far as the cord blood and, and the adult stem cell research too because I think we're going to see a lot, of, a lot of success. And we can ask our guests about that yes, as well. Yes, we will. Well, for more information on today's Nutrition in the News, check out TLN.com, click on Balanced Health. And up next, Joe puts on his investigator hat and looks into debunking the old wives' tale, starve a cold, fever, feed a cold. I could never get it straight. I didn't know which it was. But anyway, starve a fever, has. feed a cold. <laughs> He'll reveal his findings after the break. And then Dr. David Bryant will be joining us, so don't Go away.